All right, we're going to look at uh, JFK and his Cold War policy after finishing up the lesson on his domestic policy. So we'll be looking at what international crises arose in the early 1960s and how did President Kennedy confront them. Just a reminder that President Kennedy was sworn in in January of 1961 and he was assassinated in November of 1963. So a very short term and however in that short time there's a lot going on. So uh, the global confrontations in the cartoon you'll see right here this uh, depicts you'll recognize Kennedy on the right the man that he's arm wrestling on the left and that he's about to apparently blow up by hitting that nuclear button that he's sitting on the hydrogen bomb. Uh, that is Nikita Khrushchev. And Khrushchev is the leader of the Soviet Union. Uh, sometimes people refer to him as the premier or the general secretary of the Communist Party. And that's his official title. And people will then refer to him as the chairman. So interchangeable titles there. So he's going to play a central role in a lot of what we're about to see. So JFK has his goal. Let's reduce nuclear threat by and the spread of communism. Uh, very similar thing we've seen uh, under Eisenhower throughout the 50s. However, there's a big difference. Uh, Kennedy wants what, we, what he calls flexible response, which means not just nuclear weapons as a way to respond to any conflicts if we were ever to get into a direct conflict with the Soviet Union. So Eisenhower's throughout the 50s, as you may remember, was to build up a lot of nuclear weapons. And the idea behind that was uh, if there was ever a war, there would be massive retaliation or MAD, which stands for mutually assured destruction. That would work as a deterrent on each side. The Soviet Union would not dare to try to attack the United States if they know there's going to be massive retaliation and they'd probably all be wiped out as well. So Kennedy feels like that's a very dangerous policy, and so he's trying to open it up with flexible response to other options. So first of all, if it turns out to be a military conflict, well, we have also conventional military that consists of regular soldiers that you would think of in the Army, uh, the Navy, and the warships, and plus the Air Force. However, he also believed in diplomatic options. There's political and economic strategies as well. Uh, examples of economic strategies could be something like an embargo on a nation. Um, it could also be another strategy of economic could be to actually provide aid to countries that might be in conflict that might be turning to communism and so on. And all along those lines, he does have uh, a plan to provide aid to countries and to focus primarily on Latin America. Uh, you may recall, what was the program that was uh, following World War II in Europe to rebuild Europe to provide lots of aid to rebuild their economies so they would not turn to communism? It is the Marshall Plan. Okay, so this is much similar to the Marshall Plan, but nowhere in scope to that in sense of the size of it. So he proposes something known as the Alliance for Progress that would aid projects with Latin American governments. This would stop them from turning to communism, much like the Marshall Plan did. He also has another idea, and that is to create a organization of young people known as the Peace Corps. So it's not the military or anything like that. It's just a group of volunteers. So if you remember from his inaugural address, he has the uh, line where he says to ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Well, what, what does that phrase mean? And that's really a sense of self-sacrifice he's asking people to do. And that's what the Peace Corps is. They're looking for young people, uh, recent college graduates that can go to these nations. Uh, we're talking in like Central America and South America. And they could promote what we were trying to promote around the world, which is capitalism and democracy, which goes along hand in hand with peace uh, and freedom. And then these countries that we would call them developing countries today, uh, they referred to at the time as third world countries. And since they're developing, they need a lot of help just getting basic things in, whether it's education or infrastructure, such as a system for fresh water, whatever. Um, so the idea here of the Peace Corps is to train and send these young Americans to foreign nations to help in these developments. Some of the things they did was taught English, they might have delivered food, um, minor construction, 
um, and, and also you know, just to help out for simple things that we take for granted in the United States. And this also really fits into the Cold War too. It's not just about helping other people, but remember that the Cold War, we see a threat of communism wherever there is mass poverty because if people are in that situation, they're going to want to turn to something better. And the communist system was considered by most people in extreme poverty to be a step up. So we wanted to help others understand um, also not just the system, but who Americans were and how Americans, Americans could help them. There was this around the world at the time, there was uh, probably even so today, this idea of or perception of the what they called the ugly American or the American imperialism, um, the meaning that Americans were just there to take over the world. And so this helps, the Peace Corps helps actually uh, erase that in the areas that the uh, Peace Corps volunteers go to. And again, that goes with the self-sacrifice as well. Uh, and unfortunately, though, in some places uh, that they went to, that locals actually thought that they were spies, that they were there actually to uh, spy on certain things and report back. So it wasn't all uh, you know, accepted with open arms everywhere, but for the most part, it, it was, and it helped out a lot of communities uh, around the world. All right, next is the space race. We already know quite a bit about this. We uh, looked at the space race, uh, the early parts of it, but just as a refresher in a lot of this. So if you see right here, this is a Soviet cosmonaut. This is different uh, in the sense that they're, they're, their astronauts were called cosmonauts. And he's also in here holding the hammer and sickle, which is the symbol of the Soviet Union. The hammer is representing industrial workers, the sickle of the uh, agrarian or the, um, the farmers. And so just so you understand what that is, I'm not sure if I went over that before with you. So we are fighting for dominance of space. Why are we doing that? Well, part of it is um, the fear of the Cold War. Uh, we don't really know what the capabilities are. Can we put weapons in space? Could, if the Soviets put a satellite, could it drop stuff on it, on us? We did not know. Uh, but it's also about uh, a race about who has the better technology. So this is kind of like a bragging rights for uh, the capitalists or the communists, whoever wins. Is going, is going to be able to claim that based on this evidence of getting into space, they have the better system. So the goal, of course, is the first humans on the moon should be Americans. That's Kennedy's goal. And Kennedy gives a speech in September of 1962 to set the stage for this. Cooperation may never come again. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, as the others do. It is for these reasons that I regard the decision last year to shift our efforts in space from low to high gear as among the most important decisions that will be made.